How about them tops, son? All day, SEC boys. You're listening to the Red Out Podcast. Welcome into another Red Out Podcast. I'm Jake, hey, live Dev- this time. Yeah, live, in person. Uh, Devin in the house, and we got Jared here. How's it going, Jared? Yes, uh, welcome back from the dead again, Jake. <laughs> Just barely, guys. Just barely. But I will say, it's like Aslan. Work might lighten up before summer, so that's good. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't know how that would work with a bank. I feel like you would be more busy in summer because people's like, I'm going and doing. But I'm not on the front line. I'm back office, so yeah. it all depends on the projects that we're working on. Okay. So I'm working on like a giant rule thing right now. Uh, and that should be over in a week or two, and then it's on to the next giant rule thing. But hopefully it'll... Uh, I'm taking down wallpaper at work. Taking out... Dude, I was so much right to take down wallpaper. No, yeah, just F that. Don't. You want to trade? Well, you can come do the Humda and I'll do the wallpaper. The person that did the wallpaper... It's in a bathroom. The person that did the wallpaper it's must have just... Wallpaper. The wallpaper's off. I got the wallpaper off. It's the glue. You got all those steamer things? Oh, no, no those not steamer things. Oh, dude, you got to do the steamer thing. Yes. Mom and Dad had one. I should, I should have. Yeah, should it's have all good. Borrow. It's all good. Um, but winners, losers, real quick. Uh, <laughs> UK lost to LSU. Which and was... Louisville lost even worse. Yeah. <laughs> they pulled a full WKU. They God, pulled a full bad. Western. They lost by 20. They were up by 23 points with like nine minutes left in the game <sighs> against Duke. They had one of the best teams in the country on the ropes. And completely fell apart. So I mean, dude, what made me laugh is I was watch, I was reading tweets from uh, Mark Ennis, a uh, media member up there, and his tweet was, "I just saw during the meltdown, he's like, I just saw a guy in front of me control a like select all delete his game story <laughs> in front of me right now." <laughs> that would be so depressing. Don't, like he had That's it written, it was done, and then he's like, "Select all delete, start over." It's like, oh, somebody's not going to meet deadline. Nope, nope, nope. Or it's going to be a real short article. Um, F all. Yeah. Oh, that is the second time in NCAA basketball history that's happened, that they, that a team has dropped a 23-point lead to, and I think the other one was VCU back in 93. I've heard that stat today. You all can comment and tell me if I'm wrong. But still, it's just crazy. It's one of those yeah, things, it is. like, like my winner loser was them both for winning and losing because yep. you're like oh we now know that when we play really well we can take anybody yeah and also oh dear god <laughs> we let it slip away yeah i mean there there was actually a picture and i haven't been able to find it but there's a picture out there of zion trying to take a ball from a guy and they said it looks like he's squeezing a balloon not oh, a yeah. basketball. That was ridiculous. You, so you saw that too, Jared, huh? Yeah, I saw that. Dude, how about that block by him the other night, though? Not in the Louisville game, but where he oh, jumps yeah. from, like, the, the three? paint yes. out to the three line? I don't know if he's real. I, I do got to ask freakish. you guys, though. But going back to the Kentucky game, do you think that was basket interference or not? No, there was a uh, still shot where... Cause, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't everybody mad... Because they were like, oh, it's not basket interference, or it was? Like, no, 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 they thought it was. They, they thought, thought that... Yeah. And they thought who committed it, though. Um, because all I'm saying is there is a picture, they yeah. zoomed in, where there is a Kentucky player with his arm yeah. through the inside of the basket when that shot's, when that shot's coming down. Like, legitimately, his arm... Is coming up like you used to do, yeah. like when you're little, when you were like a kid, nerf, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, you go, yeah. ah, like mm-hmm. literally was that. Well, from what I've heard, the call it was uh, two one against, but it wasn't. And then I don't, I don't, I don't remember who they said it was against. I, that's I'm been... saying there's a there's a good picture, and yeah. I don't know who shared it. Um, legitimately, of a Kentucky basketball player's arm going <laughs> up. Inside of the goal when that shot goes up, it's like okay, well that's something. Yeah, it was like a double goal ten, just essentially. Yeah, I mean, crazy. But crazy, hey, though. if you're mad about it, don't be that close in the game. Like, yeah, play better. You're don't let them to- take it to the rack, look like from the entire length of the court like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, even I mean, we've been there. Oh yeah, Marshall, I mean, like, like yeah, uh, that's part of it. 
And that's um, what I say. That's like, okay, well, it sucks, and yeah. don't be, don't put you on the situation. It's part of the game. Be better, exactly. It's part of the game. Uh, speaking of heartbreak, Lady Tops losing to Rice uh, last week on the seventh, and losing to North Texas on the ninth. Um, I didn't write any stats for those two. Well, I mean, it's okay. We don't have, we don't have to go into a breakdown of it. I mean, a lot of people, you know, if you didn't see it, we knew coming in. We talked about yes. Rice is league leader. The yes. loss against them, we're like, okay, that sucks, but all right, not unexpected. Yes. The North Texas one you're a little more upset about yes. because that's a game you think you can win. Yeah. You know, you're at home. You think you can handle this, but you get to it, and it's like, ah, crap, you lose. Um, and it's not a game that you want to drop, especially when you're um, – Well, you know, I mean, um, North Texas is, what, a I mean, they're five, and, they're five <laughs> and six in conference. They're 12 and 11. Um, They're six games out, so yeah, six games back. So that's not a game you want. That's not a game you want to drop. I no. mean, it's not a game you want to drop for your NET ranking. Which, by the way, that's just as bad as RPI. I've been, I've been, I've been tracking it, right? And it's just as crappy as RPI. It's not any better. Uh, it's not any more accurate because people like you'll win a game and go down three spots, or you'll yeah. win a game and not change, or you'll win like after the North Texas game, like not, like not change. Yeah, and be ranked behind some of these teams with crappy schedules, with gaudy records. It's like, okay, look, for instance, Murray State. Yeah. Everybody loves everybody jerking off Murray State. Well, guess what? They ain't play nobody. Yeah, I know they got an NBA player. I know they're really good. But how are you going to be top sixty NET when you have not played anybody? I said like Belmont. Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, the AT and T scores. Jacksonville State, though, place. like that, uh, Jacksonville State, Ray Harper. Good old Harper Mania, can't forget him over there. I mean, he's doing really good with the Jacksonville State over there. It's pretty much between them and Belmont. I see the OBC coming down too. Close. I mean, Murray State has John Morant, and that's basically it. Like they're relying on him to get like thirty and ten assists basically every game, and if he's not able to do that, then eh, oh well. I know it, it just bugged me, but it is sad. Back to late times, it is sad they dropped two uh, in a row. That's not something they typically do. Um, I hope they can bounce back. Um, I'm sure they will. College has got them going. They're at MTSU, at UAB. Uh, hopefully come out with some wins. Uh, I think they should. I mean, uh, MTSU is probably going to be the stronger opponent you're going to face here. They're two games back. They're 18-6 and six overall, 9-2 and two, uh, conference. They're going to be the toughest. Yeah. Which the Mutts, they're 100 miles of hate. It doesn't matter what sport. If it's chess, we still hate them. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't care. I still want to win. Um, I, the only person I've ever heard disagree with that is Ross. Yeah, Ross. Like, I don't care. He's more on the Marshall rivalry than he yes. is Hundred Miles of Hate. Which I mean, Hundred Miles of Hate week is still my personal favorite. I mean, I'm loving every bit of this week, especially tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be fun. Uh, just okay. I got this. I got to ask this question, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there, and I'll throw it out to Jared first. Oh would you care? Would you care if Murfreesboro MTSU fell into the center of the earth? Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, the nice person inside of me wants to say that I would feel some type of like sympathy towards that, but then I would remember that it's Murfreesboro, so absolutely not. Like thinking. Also, another thing is the Conference USA Facebook page is doing that. Like poll or whatever, choosing between 2008 Western, the Ty Rogers shot versus the 2016 MTSU beating Michigan State, which, I mean, granted, I mean, beating the two seed as a 15 seed is a little more impressive than being the 12 and beating the five, because that's always a likely upset anyways, but, I mean, Ty Rogers shot, it's amazing, won an SB award, even though people don't really care about those anymore. But I mean, and another thing, like I only want to see MTSU get national attention unless it's like an actual dumpster that is like so far inflamed in Murfreesboro <laughs> that it's making national attention. That's all I want to hear from them. So you want a controversy of them on PEDs while in an African American studies class that doesn't exist while doing some sports gambling? Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yes. Um, I don't want nobody to get hurt. Yeah. Just emotionally scarred. Yes. Maybe. yes emotionally yes. scarred. You know, expensive therapy later, yes, sort yes. of thing. Financially scarred as well. Ooh, financially be good. Not like de- not like destitute. 
Right. I'm fine with it. No, I don't want to destitute. Just like I wouldn't mind seeing Brandon Stock still on the side of the road with a sign that says "We'll work for food." <laughs> we'll, work. Um, we'll coach for food. Yeah, we'll exactly. Food. <laughs> with Will G A for food. Yes, exactly. We'll get eight solid wins and maybe a bowl game, but not a conference championship for wins uh, yeah, for food. There you go. <laughs> that sounds about right, actually. Uh, Jake, do you care if they fall in the center of the earth? Again, so long it. I, I don't want all kinds of people to get hurt or nothing. But if they all, like, transfer to, like, some crappy community college that's not MTSU, um, yeah. <laughs> zing, uh, and then it all fell in. But then you have so to So they could, they could go to, like, tech, uh, Tennessee State, just down the road. That's in Nashville. It's yeah. Not, it's like, not the back fat. It's just it in just Nashville. It just is Nashville. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's, 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 like, it's better than <laughs> It's better, the yeah. Straight bitties. That's like That's like the round steak or... The actual good steak. Yeah, whereas MTSU is like that weird grizzly thing, mm-hmm. and like they, they, it's like it, it's like hamburger steak. It's like you grind it up, exactly. and it sort of is at the side, and we're gonna call the steak. But it's not really steak. Yep. And it kind of tastes okay if you put a bunch of a one mm-hmm. on it, but you're not gonna order the whole bunch. That's like buying a steak at a crappy steak place, like Bob Evans. <laughs> I forget Bob uh, Evans. Uh, that's that's like yes, that's like buying steak at Bob Evans instead of going to like uh, Longhorn Texas Roadhouse, one of those steakhouses. It's, it's that's funny. like that. The Bob Evans steak is the kind of steak like you could read a newspaper through. Oh, that's the steak that you just you eat it and then it, it's like gas station sushi. You just completely regret it after. Ugh. <laughs> is gas station sushi a thing? Can you get sushi at a gas yeah, station? Yeah, it's a legit it, thing. I've gotten it at Kroger. I know I they do it at Kroger. It, I regret it at Kroger. It sits. Yeah, know? yeah. Kroger is. Uh, I wouldn't trust it, but. <laughs> I have eaten it before, but I've regretted Same. it. I survived, but survived, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't do it again. Um, let's see. UAB, they've got them on the 16th. Uh, so, Lady Tops, give us a Valentine's Day present of beating MTSU. Please. Yes. yes. Um, Western is f- three games back. Sorry, I couldn't. My yeah. notes kind of ran together. Uh, so, we'll see how it goes. We'll just. Um, so, the more exciting news. Wins! <laughs> That's Gosh. a Balrog for those of you uninitiated. <laughs> yes, the yes. Demon from the deep. Yeah, that's right. Um, WKU beat Rice, 92-85. Whoop, whoop. To uh, my surprise, because I said on here that they would lose that game, and they almost I was going to say, well, they about did. They came so, so close twice. Don't yes, feel bad. I was bad, thinking they it, were, but they proved me wrong, which obviously I'm thankful for. But I thought it was going to happen. It was a lot closer than it should have been. Yeah, but, I mean, progress, right? They were able to grind one out. Yes, yes, yes. And you got to love that. Yes. I mean, it's just exciting to beat Rice anyway. I mean, well, it's, a, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a clinchy game. You, you clenched up a little bit the whole time. You know, you're not, really, you're not really comfortable the whole time. No, God, no. You sit on the edge of the seat the entire time. Like, yell, why aren't you the putting them away? Yes, just finish this. Um, and I think that goes back to maturity, but, you know. You know, it, it does. A win's a win, though, in my book. I mean, yes yeah. and no. It was an ugly win. Yeah, I mean, you definitely always take a win, right? You'll definitely, especially when it's a road game, because road games, while not impossible, are harder. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't always say they're like really difficult because good teams win on the road, regardless. The better team wins. Yes. Um, nine times out of ten, but it, it was nice to see. It kind of freaked me out. The price was okay. Ah, what are we doing? Are we gonna let them in this? Okay. Well, now going to North Texas, you think, ah, crap. We almost got beat by Rice. Can't feel good going into North Texas. And again, another one of those clenchy, sweaty games because you get out to a tremendous lead and then the ugly turnovers and again this, you know, attention to detail and the maybe maturity starts kicking in. But the one of the saving graces, right, fundamentals, hit your free throws and, you know, one full court shot. <laughs> And you come out a three-point win, yep. which is kind of wild that that almost, you know, it's like three-quarter court shot, like, was the game winner. Yeah, I mean, if that would have been taken away, I mean, that would have been a completely different ball game. Oh, yeah, because, oh they, because we did not have the momentum at the end of the game. I mean, it just, no, it, it we wasn't. lost it big time. <laughs> and we're able to hold on. Now, again, able to hold on. That's different from ODU. That's different from a lot of the other games where we've seen them drop it. But, God, it's the coasting. Know, I just it is, and that's and you, you know you look at all the articles that talk about it. How the coach, how like Tay was like, look, coach has told us, quit looking at the scoreboard. You're gonna make a run. Just be ready to absorb it. And they did. For, you know, I mean, you, you don't want the guys to go on a run like that, even if it is their home court. But at the same time, if you're able to get out of there, I mean, they were a top team in the league. Um, though we do know that it was uninflated. 
uh, yeah. record at twenty. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at it. Now. They got the best. They got the best record. As I was going to say like it was either games. it was either you or Jared said it was a paper tiger. Jared t- yes. has been saying all season that it was a paper. Yeah, tiger. Yeah, I've always said that they're overrated just because they never played anybody in their non conference. Yeah, and, and they didn't. And it's like, okay, well, your training schedule is garbage. I mean, I know you're 25 right now. And, well, and, you know, and you know what sucks is, let's say for a minute they win the conference championship and they go. And they've only got, you know, let's say they get two more losses on the season. Yeah. Now we're going to have to hear ESPN talk about how they got 20-some-odd wins and single-digit losses and da 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 And Charles Barkley's not going to have looked at it except for like three minutes yeah. before when he ate his cookie, his pregame snack. And they're just like, God, guys. I just... And I wouldn't put them higher than a 13 seed either. That's just me, though. Even if they only win, only lose two more games for the rest of the season, I'd still – I wouldn't – maybe a 12. But, I mean, with their strength of schedule, I wouldn't put them higher than a 13. Yeah, no, they shouldn't because, again, they haven't played anybody. Yeah. They just haven't played. They haven't beat people. Uh, but they're, they're not going to – I mean, they'll probably finish with single-digit losses. Um, but it'll be close. Um I just feel like as far as playing when we played North Texas, um, stat-wise, we had a better field goal percentage. They had a better three-point percentage. And, of course, with the turnovers like you mentioned before. But we were both neck and neck on rebounds, so that tells me Bassie's putting in the work on the boards. Dude, he's he's averaging completely... a double-double now. Like, yes. Again, like I said, it's the, one of these weirdly like quiet, amazing seasons. He's won conference freshman seven times now. Mm-hmm. Isn't it seven? And like three or four in a row. Um, again, when a freshman is average on a, on a team with guys like Josh Anderson that can rebound, like averaging a double double is stupid. I yes. mean, it's just absolutely it's 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 awesome. And I don't know if he if he I, I don't know where he ends up next year. I have no idea. Um, but regardless, he's gonna set a and already has set a bunch of freshman records. Yeah, he's he's been phenomenal this year. Um, and, and one other thing. Uh, Go ahead, Jared. Like another thing, we also have some breaking news, I guess you can say. But uh, Coach Stansberry obviously didn't make the trip for mm-hmm. the Texas games. And I just saw an update that he's not going to be at either of the games at Diddle, uh, Middle or UAB. He's getting back surgery on Friday morning, and he's hoping after that he should be good for oh, hopefully wow. all the high games. So well, it must be pretty serious if he's getting surgery on it. Now we have the answer to the, one of the questions. That's right. And actually... Um, Jared, have you heard exactly what it was? Because I've heard it was just a bulging disc. I guess, I guess uh, it's not I just specifics. I mean, I just know it was like a back injury, and he was getting surgery on it now. So I mean, hopefully he'll get back he'll, to normal soon. Yeah, here's hey, prayers your way, coach. Uh, hope everything goes well with your surgery and everything. Um, the back surgeries are no joke. No, they're not. They, in fact, everybody I've ever talked to, every physical therapy therapist, every doctor is always like, "Hey, that is a last resort. Is there is a uh, surgery? Because once you have, I mean, yeah. your dad knows. Yep. Yep. Once yep. he has back surgery, man, it's just super duper rough. Yep, it's and it's really hard to come back from. It is. It's a long recovery. So and coach, don't rush. Yeah, take your time. Let Stay you, in the training your room. Your boys got it. Yep, let them ice. <laughs> yeah, the assistants will cover you, buddy. Um. So, uh, let's see. Well, I guess I guess we can talk a little bit. Let's see. Middle uh, ESPN's got us predicted at a ninety three percent, which I am completely fine with. Yeah, but we know, should be. I mean, they should be. But like, I feel I feel like every time we have one of those, we either pee down our leg. Yeah. Or it's a clinchy, like uh, holding a fart kind of game. Yes, it it is very. And it's going and it's going to be because it's yeah. middle. It is. It's always doesn't matter how good we are, how bad they are. It's going to be one of those stupid games. Yep. And we're all going to be sitting there listening and watching, chewing our fingernails off. Yep. And that's what's kind of crazy though. Um, the ninety three percent makes me nervous more so than like playing UAB. Yeah, you know? I mean, really. UAB is just close a hundred miles of hate. I mean, they're probably going to show up for that game a little more so than usual. And they play. Hey, they played Old Dominion really good too the other day. I can't remember what the final score was, but I know they had to lead at halftime. But see, I just want Western to show up on Valentine's Day, and I want them to absolutely <laughs> thrash the Blue Raiders. Like I don't. I want them to beat them so bad that their athletic director is going to question why he still decided to fund a basketball team after <laughs> Kermit left. That's how bad I want this. Like, here's a fun fact for you guys. I'll ask you guys a trivia question. What is the biggest win Western has ever had in basketball? Like most points? Like point differential? Yeah, essentially, yeah. 
I have no idea off the top of my I, head. I don't know. I know we hung 112 on Marshall last year. That was pretty good. All right. Well, I'll tell you guys, this is a really cool thing because it's 100 miles of hay week. The biggest win Western has ever had was when, against Middle Tennessee in 1965. They beat them. Let me see. I had the stat, and it's gone. Sweet. And they beat it's Middle. Gone. Listen to this. This was the final score. 134 to 84 was the final score of that game. Clem Haskins had a like all-time Western high of... 55 points. Oh, my gosh. It's a team record of 134 points, and most field goals attempted, 107 field goals attempted in that game. So it was, like, like absolutely absurd. I want that kind of thrashing of MTSU. That's all I want. Could you imagine? I would love that so much. Dude, okay, I realize that, like, when you're little in Little League and stuff, they have the run rules. The first rules, yeah. Yeah, like, Little League, you go up 10, and then they start, they keep the clock running, yada, yada, yada. Do they have a mercy rule in college, or you just go? (laughs) Well, no, it's like, do you guys remember FIU, the FIU game a couple years ago? Um, They were playing at FIU. It was raining really bad. They had to pause the game. WKU was up, like, 60 points. It was, like, 63-3. And FIU wanted to call the game. (laughs) <laughs> and commentary they wouldn't let them. They said they had to finish playing the game. They wanted to just be like, all right, fine, 63. Obviously, we're not winning. We don't want to play anymore. And I wonder if they you could forfeit that, though. You can't. They tried. Conference USA said, no, you, you finish playing. My thing is, I think you could, well, I think Conference USA is pushing that because of the TV rights. Probably, yeah, because they've still got, yeah, they, they gotta, have to put a problem. Yeah, which, if that. you're FIU, you take a knee a whole bunch. My thing is, I don't even know if I'd even take a knee if I'd just be like, we're not coming out of the locker room. I mean, you probably violate like some kind of agreement. That They're you probably a fine, yeah. I and so you don't want to do that, but I mean, like, I don't think I, I doubt there's anything about like just all right. Well, knee, incomplete pass, incomplete pass, incomplete pass, punt. Yeah, but then it's going to be like you're just putting on first down. That would get people talking. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but my thing is, if um, I'm guessing it was Brom, mm-hmm. if I was Brom, I would just be throwing it. I'd be like Hail Mary. Woo! I mean, probably. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it would be. So like, he didn't hate FIU like he hated Marshall, so. Well, I'd hate uh, Marshall or in the Mutts as far yeah, as I'm dude, concerned. He, he always oh. poured him. That was my favorite thing about Jeff Brown was he hated Marshall. I and don't he, blame him. And he was always poured on. Street fight! Street fight! I saw that the other day. Yeah, I thought that was works, the greatest man. thing. Whatever works. Um, So, Jared, I will turn it over to you for a couple minutes, buddy. All right. So, I mean, I've always – I've seen other people do this like sort of like a challenge. Like this is my challenge to the guys – playing this week and for the rest of the season be the team that we all thought you would be coming into this year now is your chance to win two games at home which home wins are super super important there's no reason y'all should lose like you did against troy that's behind you don't do that again this is your chance go and finish this season off on a high note get in the top five pods or whatever it's called like the different pod system be in the top five get the two home wins that you have in that and hopefully a road win too get that first round by in the conference tournament and then that's when you go on your run you only have to play three games not four you're making it easier on your future self but just don't do anything stupid your fans are going to be there to support you they've sold out diddle they've done their job we need you to win these last two games. I don't care if Middle has done better than they were earlier this season. I don't care if UAB is whatever they are. I mean, they're just average at best this season. They've fallen off a lot. But don't do anything stupid. Don't lose these games. Finish the season off. That's my challenge. Please. <laughs> <laughs> that's why That's why Tops. Yes. What? Yeah, um, we should. Do we have inspirational music? Can we put inspirational music under that? <laughs> Jerry, get on that. Well, He's the I, music I, man, I'll motivational. My my new motto is be a hilltopper, not a sinkhole. So a hilltopper, not yeah, a sinkhole. There we go. <laughs> I like that. So Jared's being a hilltopper tonight, trying to motivate. So that boy. Limit the stupid turnovers. Don't coast. Just play basketball, guys. That's all you got to do. Yeah, dude, seriously. Put on the gas and don't let up. That's right. Uh, you like so, all the Blues Brothers? Have you guys seen the Blues Brothers? Uh, Please yeah. tell me you have. Yeah. Okay. Dude, see, I've, like, I've uh, actually never like seen Like the country uh, trailer <laughs> thing, like the guys from Nashville, like he sprayed the glue on the foot of the gas, and when he put it down, like he started speeding through everyone and <laughs> flew off into the lake or something. That's what I want from Western. I want them to just put the foot on the gas, keep it there. Jared, you're the person I should be asking if you've seen Blue Brother, Blues Brothers. Right, because I Dude, can't. that's one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> but he, he's that. a music guy. Yeah, so I can you, see you that. figured, like. Yes. 
the musicians in that movie, there will never be a movie as great as it with the people they had in that. Oh my gosh, Jim Belushi. Which another great movie with uh, Dan Aykroyd is Trading Places. Have you seen that? It's trading Places. I haven't so seen good. it. Okay. Uh, that's your homework, Jared. Go see Trading Places. It's with... Uh, Man, stop giving me homework. I graduated <laughs> like... Stop giving me homework. That Professor Stewart over there. Trading Places. It's got Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. It is a classic. That's yeah, that sounds like it'd be... Oh, my gosh. It, you'll just have to watch it. It's based off of, like, the Prince and the Pauper kind of a story. Yeah, um, so, we will... We're going to cover the... the uh, sorry. The signing class... Since Western just had a big signing class, um, for me, how many guys did we sign? Let me scoot over here so I can read off. Um, do 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 do. Skim skim skim. Okay, first off, my biggest player that I'm excited about, excuse me, is the 24 year old. No, I don't know. No, I'm saying they're 21. I scrolled down the end. Oh, list. 21. Sorry. 24, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I thought you were pointing at that kid. No, no, no. My exciting player that I'm ready for is John Haggerty from Melbourne, Australia, who is a punter. Yes, he is and has experience in the pros. Hey, I'm fine I with that. I don't understand NCAA rules, but I don't care. Yeah, because you're supposed to have a, a level of amateurism. I have to really slow down to say that exactly. Um, but I'm fine with this. I, I love the Aussie kickers. He's 24, so he's had some experience. He's a little more mature. He knows what he's doing out there. I'm excited about that. Um, we do have a few kids from, I say locally, but they're from the state. We got a kid from Louisville. I know we got a, is it a tackle from Franklin? Yeah, and a running back. That's a walk on. I uh, got a DB from, uh, from Bowling Green, Clayton Bush. That is Dr. Bush's son, who played at Western as well. Um, he's from Scottsville, so I know that. Um, let's see, skimming, Glasgow, got Dalvin Smith, yep. I hope that's how you said that. It is, yeah. Um, I don't see any names that I would really screw up this time, uh, except no, for that one. You waste. <laughs> Number 14, Traverius Springer? Or Trevarius? I don't Trevarius? know, that, that one I'll screw up. Pota- potato to po- potato, as far as I'm concerned, I almost spelled that, I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So who are you, so you said you must have the punter, what about you, Jared? Who's your, who's your favorite, besides the punter, because Stephen already stole that one? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm happy for both of the Franklin guys that are going to be on the team. Like, I don't know how much Trey Bass is going to be utilized. He's a pretty quick guy, maybe for, like, kick returns or something. But I know the offensive line depth is kind of deep. I don't know how much Jack Randolph will get, but I hope he gets some snaps. I feel like he may in a few years, but he'll just have to get some more muscle on him. He's already got the weight. He's, like, 295 or something like that. But give him some more reps, he'll be good. I think Jake's a little salty because I took his his favorite player. Actually, you did not take my favorite player. <laughs> oh, I didn't? Player. So my favorite player, who I'm like most looking forward to, is Clayton Bush. Because really? Because he, he is a local kid, South Warren prospect. Yes. Um, who I think is going to be able to play, I mean, in high school we play on both sides of the ball. It just depends on where we need him. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that's smaller, an athletic so, thing. So, but so DB probably. Yeah. Um, I will say, outside of him, uh, that if I can find it to make sure I get his name right, Manny Allen, the wide receiver. Yes. Uh, he was a four-star before he reclassified. Uh, I think he's an immediate impact at the receiver. We do need some people to step up at receiver. We've got some dudes that are just, I mean, this close to breaking out and having yeah. like excellent seasons. But we just, whether it was offensive style, whether yeah. it was personnel, we did have some trouble having that stud. You could just t- throw the ball up we to We did it. not have the Julian Edelman, yeah. You just... You know, okay. <laughs> Let me start you out. That dude is always either hurt mm-hmm. or just a normal white slot receiver of the Patriots. Nine times out of ten. Everybody's like, oh my god, you know, my boss <laughs> was all about the Patriots, which is hilarious because she is a very ethical, like moral person. I was like, how and again, yes. she doesn't follow sports at all, except yeah. for volleyball. Except for the Super Bowl, probably. Except for the Super Bowl yeah. and volleyball, because she played volleyball in college. She's really into volleyball, which is cool. That's what sure. I told her. Go yeah. to Western, go to UW. they got great volleyball programs. Yeah. But everybody losing their crap over Emma. Yes, let's just throw out years of data, because he has an amazing... I'm not saying he's not a great player. I'm not saying he hasn't had some amazing 
you know, he's not a good contributor. I'm not saying he's not a, a, a great receiver. But to kiss his butt so much because an amazing <laughs> game plan by Belichick and the immortal one playing catch with him, yeah. just come on. Well, the funny thing is, is correct me if I'm wrong, didn't he have an issue with PEDs earlier in the year? It yeah, wouldn't he did. surprise me. Yeah, and I mean, first off, that beard, dude. I am. I do not mind facial hair, but that beard, that beard looked like he came from Lowe's. I'm telling you, if I am any, if I am the Rams defensive coordinator who got you know fired, uh, yeah, I'm saying, hey, when you come, I'm sending in little Timmy. Yeah, I say Timmy, you and I'm sending a bigger one <laughs> on the line. Don't do the hand fighting. Yeah, I want you to grab that beard. <laughs> And I want you to bring his face so close to yours that you can bite him on the nose and just tug. How are you going to bite him on the nose? He has a face mask. What? I just, it's, this is it's, not it's, basketball. It's you just can't just You can't wipe a booger in his head. You just pull him close enough and just get in there and like, come here, boy, and just sling him to the ground. Because it only takes one of those to throw the dude off his whole game, and he's always hurt anyways. Yeah, so put, sure, so sure, put, sure. So put, a, so put a giant on there, put a freaking linebacker on him, and hit him. Yeah. Um, as far okay, Jared. Sorry, I got, I so got a So you. Jared is excited about the Franklin kids, and I can I'm understand sorry. that. I would be too. Um, as far as impact players so far, I just don't see anybody coming in um, immediately, except for maybe a DB. Uh, I don't uh, think a Manny D-line. Allen. I think he can. You think you think Manny Allen could? Um, he might be able to. Major prospect. Yeah, uh, had a lot of. Uh, again, he was originally committed to USC. Uh, the only thing is, you know, following his recruitment a little bit, maybe some maturity stuff. I don't know. So did um, oh, the uh, offensive coordinator pull him? Yeah, oh yeah. I was gonna say because yeah. it says he's committed to USC, and then yeah. he came over with us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, hmm, wonder how that worked out. Um, he could. I'll give you that. I'd have to see some highlights on him. Um, that's the hardest part for me with watching these signing kids. But I will have an article coming out in another week or two uh, where we talk about where I'm going to talk about key impact players for this coming season, and we'll see. So, Jake. Yeah. You want to get on your soapbox? I don't know if it's a soapbox. But it's kind of rude. But uh, it's honest, so that's what we'll go with. You know, it has been... Technically, soapboxes, you can't be rude on a soapbox. Can Because preachers are rude sometimes. That's true. But, that some, true. but you know what? I'm not going to compare myself to a preacher. But Yeah, that would, that would, that would really be bad. I'd, but, I would uh, have to move because I'm sure yeah, there would be right, lightning or something. struck by lightning or something. <laughs> get a, a plague upon me. But, you know, it's been since the Brom crap that I've really wanted to just kind of spew anger into okay, the universe, okay. which is what I'm going to do now, because we all see it. We're all part of the Facebook groups and the Twitterverse and everything, and it takes all kinds. But after this last few weeks, I am convinced that while Twitter is a hate-filled hilarity of jokes and memes, I think Facebook might be like the trailer park <laughs> of social media. It might be like people of walmart.com, but with the actual people giving voice to their thoughts, <laughs> okay. if you can call them that. And the reason I say that is because, you know, every fan base has all sorts of people. It takes a bunch of people to have a fan base. And you got your super negative people, and you got your quiet people that never talk. You got your awesome fans from Malaysia just holding it down for the underground. There we go, bud. But there's a certain type of person who really kind of gets in my crawl. And so what I'm about to say is, tar- is towards, to, and about this individual, these types of people. So this is you- probably the 99% it does not apply to any of you, just... Yeah, as well, a disclaimer, sorry. Yeah, yeah, probably, I, wish, no. I wish you could say that it would be ninety nine percent, but it's not. It's probably <laughs> but, you know, Thanks, no. There's a, there's a lot, but you know, you always talk about the people like because if you're a part of a Facebook group for following a sport of of uh, of like Western, you're you're probably vocal, you're probably engaged, right? So that is a small, but in in that group, there's a few of these people, and by God, <clears throat> anyways, if you have ever found yourself commenting, and I do mean actively commenting, because if you have thoughts and you keep them in your brain, that's cool. But if you're actively commenting, anytime somebody has 
a critical thing to say about a team. If you find yourself saying things like, well, you just need to let the coach coach. Also, I don't know why it always goes to a 50-year-old like yes. Southern woman, but it just does in my head. Yes, somebody who's going to ask for the manager. Right, it's that man. Yes. Yeah, it's always that person or her husband. <laughs> yes. Um, well, if you know so much, why don't you let? Why don't you go coach him and let the coach coach? And what well, you're not a real fan because you say all this negative stuff, and you just need to cheer him no matter what's happening. If you have these no, expressed thoughts are the thoughts of Jake Key, not of the Red Out Crew. That's so. what, just me. <laughs> hey, crap, they all think this. I'm just giving voice to it. If you think that, I can. If you if you say that, not think you can think it. A little, but if you say that, if you actively go with somebody who's like, man, can we play a three-point defense that stops people, and you comment like that, I can only think that you are, you suffer from one of three things, right? Either you're not paying attention, yeah. which is fine, you're not watching because you're not seeing stuff that's happening. Yeah. If you are paying attention, then the next thing you might be is a spineless sycophant. Now, I, hes I hesitate to use that word, because if you fall on this spectrum, you're going to have to Google that, and that's okay. So I take have a, to Google So it. take a second right now, pause, that's a great thing on podcast, pause, and go Google that, come back, we'll be here. Because you don't have the spine to have a thought other than, rah, rah, everything's great. Because guess what, guys? Sometimes things aren't great. Yep. And people are allowed to say that without you attacking them. Yep. But if you are neither one of those, if you are paying attention and you do have a spine, then the third and final thing that you must have, or not have, you must have the cognitive reasoning skills of like a severely delayed naked mole rat. Naked mole rat? You must, yeah, you like that's a Kim Possible reference yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah blast from nice. the past, baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because normal people can hold two thoughts in their head at the same time that might not exactly match up. They can see something, an event, a basketball game maybe, and they can think, oh, you know what? Charles Bassey is amazing, and I'm really happy with how he did. But then that individual can also think, hey, or say, man, Tay's been in a slump. What's up with that? Yep. But these people do not seem to be able to do that. They seem to only be able to see positive things through the blinders of stupidity. But you know what? That's okay. Because even if you are one of these people that the rest of us love to make fun of and who actively just kind of are bridge, living under bridge people on the internet, I want to say to you, wouldn't that be a troll? Yeah, but that's... I, I hesitate to say troll. And the reason I do is because troll, for internet slang, implies some sort of intentionality in what they're doing. And I don't think these people have more than four brain cells to rub together in order to actually be an active troll. Because, like, trolling is where you're, like, you don't necessarily believe something, but you just kind of dig at people to see what's up. ironic. Do. Trolling yeah, is ironic. Yeah, they're, like, ironic. They, you know, they have more than the emotional depth of a teaspoon. Okay. Not these people. Okay. But I say to these people, guys, if you're listening, if you're commenting, please keep it up. Because even though you get my blood pressure going when I read your stupid NASA 9 comments, you are excellent content. And not only excellent content, but you are so much fun for us to talk about and, and to continue to stir the pot for people that can comment on things without, you know, exerting a bunch of effort to, like, hold two thoughts in their brain at the same time. So please don't stop, but just know that you are the absolute bottom of the barrel when it comes to the fan base. We love you, but you're hilarious. My... Yep. Go ahead, Jared. I just have two things on that. One, Jake, I'm making you an admin in the WKU basketball group. <laughs> 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 Two, uh, if you love seeing extremely terrible, terrible takes like the people that you were talking about, there is a certain new Twitter account. I say new with parentheses, <laughs> but uh, it has been it's, up there. Uh, just it's, WK, it's WKU old takes exposed. Uh, at is uh, cold WKU takes 
where it features some of the most stale and or hot takes in existence for many things to someone saying that Stansberry is a quote NAI Division Three coach. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Or, and another person saying to hashtag fire Rick Stansberry, hashtag bring back Darren Horns. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you will see on this account. I love that. Darren yes. Um, Now, was, I'm not going to go into a rant like Jake did, and I won't have any words. You'll have to Google. The only people that truly um, annoy me on sports uh, pages is the people who say, just let the coach coach. Oh God! Yeah, I left yeah. them out, but for sure. Yeah, because and and the positive pe- peeps are fine. I know where they're coming from. They're just trying to be nice. Yeah, but there's a difference in like Matt McKay positive. Yes, and like somebody commenting something reasonably negative. Yes, and then someone else doing that, which yes. is like the coach is just coaching. Why don't you go coaching if you're yeah. so smart? That's that's the ones that really tip me over. Because it's well. If why don't you go coach if you're so smart? First off, I have not put in the workload to be a Division One coach. You right. know how much GA time and butt kissing they probably had to do to get where they are. All of it. that's fine. You know, they wanted to do that job, and for the coaches who either are successful or not successful, don't be sitting there hating on people because it's your job. That's the job you chose. That's the vocation you chose. You want to uproot your family every few years, then that's your job. So that's I, I see both sides of things, so I try to be a little nicer about things, but more power to you guys. Who is blowing me up? And I will say, I mean, ridiculous as Western's fan base is, at least certain people within it like that, at least we are not UK's fan base. Hey, Drop we mine. haven't called in death threats to a guy's... <laughs> Roofing business. The FBI has not investigated us yet, to our knowledge. <laughs> Which is the worst thing I have ever heard in my entire life on that show. Um, yes, at least we have not done that. Um, not yet. Anyways. And we will. We will try not to ever post anything about that. Yeah. Uh, as far as referees' personal jobs, uh, if you don't know what you're talking about, just, what we're talking about, just, just message Google us it. or Google it, and you'll figure it out. Um, so, let's reach into the mailbag. You want to start us off with uh, our one favorite fan Woo, from Jeff Twitter. Watson. From Twitter, I'll be specific. Yeah, this is the Twitter stuff. Uh, and, of course, I will cover the Facebook stuff because I'm more of a Facebook guy. I don't do all the hate-filled stuff like Jake does. Oh, it's just, it's just <laughs> I, I, I have a lot. I got hate in your heart, got to let it out sometimes. Uh, yeah, so Jack Watson, uh, one of our diehard Twitter followers, Ass, and now we have we, yes, we don't we, necessarily have an answer, but we, we have more yes. information. Jack, if you, this is the first time you're seeing it, though you're on Twitter a lot, so probably not. Um, Coach Stans is having back surgery. He's going to be out at least the next two games, and who knows? Yeah, I mean it. It could be the rest. Theoretically, of the if we do get a bye, it could be the first game of the tournament or the pod, whatever you want to call it, when he comes back. Theoretically, yeah, I don't know. It I don't could know. be the second. It could be that pod at the end of the season, or it could be like you said, the conference tournament. I don't know. Just don't rush back. Like that comment, so. Oh yes, we shall. I mean, like the comment. Take down. He's been really good so far. I've been really impressed with how he's been. Yeah. For yes. Sure. But I mean, what are we going to do if he keeps winning games? I mean, currently he's undefeated as a head coach in Division One basketball. So I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. he's batting a thousand. Yes. Two and oh. You gotta love that. Um, already answered Matt. Let's see here. Yeah, uh, Mike Burke, uh, yes, I understand the hate of EKU because I experienced the twilight of that hate, so I completely understand. Um, well, yeah, and that one time they beat us in basketball a couple years ago that made me really mad because uh, that was a game we shouldn't Eastern, have lost. Yeah. So, yeah, I can. Yeah. I totally, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in the boat with hating on Eastern. I That's, still, yeah, I, I love Eastern. I, I still wish we had a couple of our old VC rivals, at least Murray State and Eastern Kentucky in basketball. Those are two games that we should always have every season. I don't care what it does to our RPI or strength of schedule. That should always be a Seriously, thing. I agree. All the in-state stuff needs to stay because the local rivalries are some of the best. How many players will put their name in the draft and how many will come back to school? That question comes from Darren Johnson. I will, I, I'll go with this. Two put their names in and zero come back. 
How many you think? Okay, so who you who? You, well, that's Bearden because we already know he did yeah. last year. He's gone at he has no more eligibility, so yeah. he's going to put it in. I don't think he gets drafted. Okay, um, I hope he does. I, I always hope that. Yeah, our guys yeah, yeah. yeah. Complete um, success for the guys. He's going to make money playing wherever yes. he is. Um, and I honestly think Bat is going to put his name in the draft. I think he's going to be a uh, tail end first rounder, and he's going to go. So Hollinsworth, he's a senior. Is that right? No, no, he's a sophomore. Oh, okay, never mind. He I could thought put he was his name in the draft. <laughs> He feels like a senior. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I get he doesn't feel really like one, though. He's been very inconsistent this year. I know. This season, yeah. and I, I, I don't know what it is. We had gotten that you know, question. Sophomore slump exists for a reason. It's true. It, it, yes. it, I mean, it is a it's thing. It's legit. But, but I mean, I, Tay's still my favorite player. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. he was last year. Yeah. He is this year. Yeah. I just, Kentucky guy. I'm rooting for Savage. I, I do, still I, stand I, by I, my I, guy. I like I Savage, and, and I hope he continues to. You'll get better and better. Yeah. Um, go back to Twitter for a sec. What, Jared? Who do you think? How many you think declare, and how many you think come back? Uh, I think two is probably a solid number. Bearden and Bassey; those are the only two that I feel like. Well, Bearden has before, like you said, and obviously Bassey has the most pro potential. I think it'd be dumb for any of the other guys to not because that they're not that good of possibly being in the NBA. It's just one. This is going to be a really loaded class, and two. They could definitely benefit staying another year. Like the perfect example, P.J. Washington at Kentucky. Like he had a eh, freshman year, and he's come back, and he has dominated and been one of U.K.'s best players as a sophomore. I think that would be really good for Bassey even to be able to stay another year. But if he will, that's another question. But, I mean, Hollingsworth, he's averaging 14 points. Savage is averaging 13. I mean, both of those could be playing better. I mean, they've had some pretty off nights recently, but Anderson is the most athletic out of those. I feel like he has the type of explosiveness to be an NBA player, but he definitely needs another year. I actually think there's just going to be one, and it's going to be Bearden. Bassey's going to stay. <laughs> well, he's going to declare yeah, you can yeah, still yeah, test yeah, the yeah. water. Well, I don't have any problem with it. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, because because so you all don't know if you're new to the, to yes. the podcast. Welcome. This is our usual shenanigans. Yes. And two, Devin's bold prediction at the end of the, at the beginning of the year was yes. Bassey comes back. Yes. And so he is pulling hard. I mean, we we all want him to come back because <laughs> we all want an excellent player, and we will not be mad if he no, leaves. No, no. If get that money, son. Yes. Don't get that bread. Yes, but I, still, I, I think honestly, I think the contributing factor is going to be what's he going to make. If yeah. another year is going to is going to guarantee more money, he's coming back. I think it's all first round, and second round yes. stuff, and that's what we've seen. He was like at the beginning of the season, he was like a, a lottery pick and and all this stuff, and he has slid down the draft boards. And it's not necessarily because of his performance. Like I said, I think he's having like quietly one of the best years we've ever seen. I just think. It's almost like the Heisman in football. Like, if your team's not – you could be throwing for 600 yards a game and you're still not going to win the Heisman if your team's losing. Uh, so I think that's kind of affecting him, that the, the team play isn't necessarily great. And he's had some freshman inconsistencies, which don't they all. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I kind of – I think we're all kind of on the same page. Bearden's definitely gone because he doesn't have any eligibility left. And whether or not Bassey goes is whether or not he's a first or second round pick. I've actually, I actually see there is some debate on Facebook as to uh, Bassey being either a late first round or mid second. I think if he goes second, I think He'll he stay. stays. Yeah, if if he and that's the good thing now, right? You can declare for the draft. I like you can go that. Work out for some teams. Yes. They can give you some feedback, and they can be like, "Oh yeah," and they can even kind of give you promises, like, "Hey, we would take you in the first round if yes. it came down to it," or "We think we're going to take you in the second round," and then you can balance it out. Okay, so we got Brett. Uh, from Facebook, Brilliant. gotta love it, buddy. Uh, appreciate you uh, always supporting us and, and always being active. Yes, actively supporting us. Uh, he likes to call out my laptop when it's really loud, which it's quiet tonight. So yeah, um, will we be distracted at home on Thursday and drop it to middle at home? I think it's a good possibility. Yeah, no, I'm terrified of it. Yes, me I'm too. absolutely terrified of it for uh, sure. Uh, Jared, you terrified? Mm, honestly, I'm not as terrified as I'm going to lose now. Um, yep. Yep. But I will say that they will definitely keep it within 10 points. I don't see us getting the type of blowout that I wish would happen, but they'll keep it within 10 points. I think it's going to be a relatively close game, but I still think Western will be able to pull it off because, I mean, it's 100 miles of hate. Diddle's going to be p- uh, filled with people. It's time. It's it's getting down to the nitty gritty. This is crunch season. You got to win all these games if you want to be able to have any chance of the postseason. So, 
they yeah. need to show up for this. I mean, they do, and, and what we're like we've said all season, what we're competing for now really is the the conference buy. That's that's it's all about that right now because the you know your resume for a tournament berth if you made it is pretty much set. I mean, honestly, you go up or down a seed line, but nothing super duper major. I mean, even if we ran the board, it wouldn't go up more than like one seed line. So now this is it. This is the season that matters. These last, you know, six or so games. This is what it's all going to come down to. Uh, okay. Okay. So, do you have any more Twitter? Uh, yeah. There's there's two more <laughs> sort of. Uh, Let's do the one from Carlos last. Yeah, Car- Okay. Carlos absolutely has the last one. We're gonna. <laughs> so Ross asked, "Is middle a tougher game now than it was a month ago?" I say, "Yeah," because they're yeah. playing better. I think they're, so. They're getting their feet under them. Yeah. Um, does everybody agree with that? So we can move on to the fun one. No, 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 no. I got one more. Oh, Devin's got, I've got one, one more. I've got one more. Um, Brett asked uh, for Matt to do a stats on our chances to win the Conference USA tournament. I have a slightly exclusive from Matt. Oh. I was, yeah, I was, I asked him, I was like, hey, can you do a quick Matt stats on our chances to win Conference USA tournament? Yeah. So this is what he says. Okay, blood. For Western to win the pod. and all okay, Andrew, blood? Yeah, that's how, <laughs> that's how we talk to each other. Um. Masaid. Yep. Uh, fam, hey, bro, got to help him out. Uh, for Western to win the pod and ultimately to win Conference USA, I think your true key is Josh Anderson and Lamonte Bearden. I think if Josh is draw- drawing fouls and being aggressive, WKU is totally different. In addition to that, Monte needs to take care of the basketball. The reason the tops have gotten on a roll is not Charles Bassey, Savage, or anybody else. It's those two. They're the keys to victory. Also a random stat, but WKU is undefeated on the season when Jake makes a three. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, guys. When I make yeah, a three. When Jake's making threes, we're good. Um, I think it's at least 7-0, and if not 8-0. Uh, I think that's more an indication of the style of the game versus Jake just being the difference maker. Way to be a difference maker, buddy. Uh, right. I also think WKU Kobe. running away with it relies on those factors still being good. Bassey being incredible like he's been, and Tavion getting back to his normal self. What's amazing is he hasn't been very good lately, and we've won 7 of 8. I also think Savage must be decent. He doesn't have to be making 60%, but he needs to make at least 40% overall from the field for him not to be a liability. Obviously, if he's in the zone from deep, WK, you should win every game by 20. My honest thought is we're hot now, and that's hard to maintain. They still don't feel like they've truly won, uh, truly woken up. Uh, I told him uh, that works. Other except Lance Bullers were 69%. <laughs> 69%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to be like, yeah, 70%. That's our chances. Nothing else. Nothing but, else. Yeah. Nope. Okay. So we're not going to do a rank tonight because we're really out of stuff to rank. Seriously, though, I mean, we're, we'd be <laughs> digging in the dumpster for stuff to rank at this point. Favorite animal starting with A was not very popular. You know, Aardvark. very fun tonight. Aardvark, good job. Antelope, anteater. Uh, okay, Army. sorry. So, we've covered this question before. We did a rank Wait, on it. Sort of. Yes. We did best. Yes. This is, this is a little different. This, this is, is more specific. Okay, read the question. So, this comes from Carlos Sierra, which, by the way, Carlos, uh, I don't know if you follow us yet, but you ought to. Yes. Uh, same thing with the person who uh, commented on and kind of answered it, Miss Jessica. <laughs> Go ahead and give us a follow because we do this kind of shenanigans uh, all the time. Pretty frequently. Yeah, yep. pretty frequently. So the question was what is the quietest bathroom to poop in on campus? Yes. Um, let me drop in one, and it's going to take me a while to find it. Uh, Fletcher, Dudes. the fearless leader of Towerack, threw in his. Ah, uh, where See, is for, it? See, for me, I actually agree with Jessica, right? Okay. She says Cravens floors one through three. And if you've, if you've ever been, you know, if you're in Cravens, you know that those floors are stupidly quiet, not only in the bathrooms, but in most places. Now, I will say, if you're looking for, like, super-duper off-the-beaten path, super-duper quiet, if you go into the library and... You go into the you walk into you walk into um, Helm there at the little cafe where Java City is, and you hang a left, and you go through those doors near like all the Confucius stuff, all the Chinese stuff. Okay. And you go in there, and they got the cool map and everything. If you um, continue on and go down uh, the stairs in there, go down to the to the 
the floor below that. You're not going into Cravens, you're still in Helm, and you go all the way down to like the bottomy bottom of Helm. There's <laughs> essentially, Helm, ha, Helm, uh, there is like some actual Kentucky law books. There's some old law reporters down there, oh. which I didn't know until I came back, you know, yeah. when I was partner out, pun intended. And you can go down this long hallway, which is very squeaky if you don't have on good shoes. I don't know yeah. what they put on the floor, but it's very well waxed. Yes. You Jake know. is a big fan of uh, George R. R. Martin and uh, J.R. Tolkien, who like to illustrate walking down a hallway. So go ahead. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I love descriptions of walking. It's my favorite type of literature. I completely zone out and skim those part, but go ahead. Yeah. You're good. But so you walk down the hall, and you go through uh, two sets of doors. you got to kind of go past a desk where somebody will look at you funny. But when you go down to the end of the hallway, you'll go through these big like blast doors into what looks like you shouldn't be there. But there's a bathroom there. There's a set of bathrooms there, and they're very old. Do not okay. know. They're very old. It's almost like you're in a stairwell, like where the bathrooms are. Little, little shady. So you pooped in the stairwell. <laughs> Pretty much. Just not down the stairwell. And you go okay. in there, and I have never met another soul in there. Yeah. I have never come across a warm seat in there. I've never even seen a little, little, little tinkle sprinkle in yeah. there. Yeah. Now, I know people know about it. Yeah. But it's not very many. Yeah. That one is, it's like the, the sub basement of Helm is like the quietest. I mean, especially if you want a quiet place to study, y'all. Like, don't go up to the top of Craven. No, it's all no, hot no. and the windows are scary. Yeah, see, I don't, yeah. Don't go up there. Go down to the basement of Helm. It's nice and cold because in the basement. It doesn't get too hot down there. Pun intended, yes. Yeah. And it is absolutely quiet. <laughs> and the bathroom. It's not, it's not a super comfortable bathroom. No. It's not a new fancy bathroom. It's not uh, got the nice, you know, big wide stalls. Um, it's not even super clean on yes. like the floors yes. and stuff. But it is deathly quiet. Uh, for me also, uh, the first runner-up, essentially, middle of the week, alumni center bathroom. Yeah, probably. There is nobody in there. No. Or like early on game day. Nobody in there. No, they yeah. pipe in the Hilltopper Sports Radio a lot of times. Mm, that's nice. And there's also, they're very new and very cool. Um, so, I, I, it took me a second, but I found Fletcher's uh, answer he mailed in. He said, the guest bathroom at Poland. Never, never been in Yeah, I've never even been in Poland. I think I've been there like one time. The only thing I know about Poland is we had that kid that killed himself in Poland when no, I was PFT. there. No, 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 the one that hung himself. Oh, he hung himself. Like this, he kid, this kid hung himself. In Poland, and it took like three or four days for somebody to find him. Oh, and the only reason they did was because of the smell. Oh man, that's yeah, sucks. yeah. It's it's really depressing when uh, suicide. So if you have suicide issues, you know you need to seek help or yeah, talk to somebody. Hotlines, everything. Reach yeah. out. Um, but back to it. Apparently, um, um, to poop. the enough. worst, the best place I found to poop was the third floor of Thompson Complex North Wing. Again, um, nobody there. Nobody was there. Um, you know, and if you go early enough, it was fine. You know. Or uh, second floor Thompson Complex Central Wing. Um, you can tell Devin had science majors because he's yes, always over yes, there in those yes. buildings. That's where I was. Of course, North Wing's not there anymore. They destroyed it, which was the saddest day for me to come around the corner and not, and it wasn't there. And I was like, ah. Um, worst places to poop. The old side of Diddle, or not Diddle, the old side of Smith Stadium before they remodeled the uh, field house locker rooms. They didn't have doors on the bathroom stalls. Nice. So it was really awkward coming around a corner and seeing somebody poo. Um, but the best place to go in there was to go to the last stall because most of the time people would stop before they got to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was really awkward when you made the corner and there was somebody there, though. Um, it's kind of terrifying. I, I, I would get, like, poop fright. I would, like, stage fright and yes. not be able to go. See, I, my wife makes fun of me because I have poop fright. If I go to a bathroom... At a store, and somebody else is in there. I can't poop. I literally would just sit there. Yeah, I understand that. Jared, do you have? Are you got poop fright? Similar to stage yeah, fright. You it's just it's just so uncomfortable. It's yes. Just, yeah, I just, yes. I'm, I'm not comfortable. I, I don't like it. In emergencies only. Yes, it's literally like my poo is like Exorcist. <laughs> you know, and it's like no, 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 no. Uh, I cannot put that un. Godly thing onto someone else. So, so I hope you'll put it on someone else. <laughs> Lord, I will not scare how a small child. Is, how <laughs> aggressive is that? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Get out of the way, Jared. What, what do you think is the quietest bathrooms going on campus? All right. So with me being a music person and everything, uh, I would definitely have to say the music, the new music rehearsal hall. But 
it can be sometimes noisy in there. Usually the doors are pretty good at isolating, like, the conducting classes going on or, like, the <laughs> instrumental bands rehearsing with, like, brass and stuff. But if you hit it when there's nothing going on, like, in between classes or, like, especially afterwards, like, at night, that place is dead. And on the one on the first, uh, the second floor, like, it's single occupant, too, so you can, like, lock the door, have privacy. Ooh, nice. No one else there it's new facilities and everything but both of the bathrooms like up and down in the music rehearsal hall very good very good dude when jared when you were talking about the the conducting classes (laughs) and like the brass bands playing all i can think is like just pooping to like a like a tuba it's like a soundtrack like <laughs> you can't even do it yeah like that like literally that's that's all i can think of it's like how you you can be serenaded yes by a brass band like like maybe next time i'm on campus yes. and I, drop through, yes. I might go try to find that that's right just you go to it's right it's right below uh fac yeah i, I know and i've seen you know i just yeah, have never yeah, been yeah. in that i think i've walked through there once yes. it's like a shortcut yes like to go through yes but other than that, kind of like how you do it. There's like a ton of stairs, but other than that, it's nice. I yeah. think I had an anthropology class there, but like I never had any music classes, so I would literally like walk through and you know hear that. But I could, I'm see in my mind, I'm just picturing not necessarily the serenading, but like you just let one rip, and there's like it just echoes down the hall because everything's great so acoustics. yes, <laughs> the acoustics just goes, and it's like rip, and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, just, and you, you can just say it was a brass. It's this yeah, 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 yeah. really uh, crappy sousaphone. Yeah, yeah, in. sure. <laughs> but don't crap in the sousaphone. That is oh. a terrible prank. Don't oh, do that. Oh, Lord. Don't the, do that. Yeah. I did, okay. I don't know if you know this or not, Jared. Um, did Matt used to play, he used to be in the pet band, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was. What did he play? Do you remember? Yeah, he played sousaphone. Oh, there we go. Nice. Yes. <laughs> I didn't even know that. But yeah, I could tell, I was going to say, I see him playing. Like, yes, A yes, sousaphone. Yes. Or like other large brass yes. instrument. Oh my gosh, that is awesome! Boom. Uh, but with that, we will conclude for the evening. Uh, we're trying. I'm trying to use bigger words. Uh, so uh, watch the Lady Tops go show out for them. They play 7:30 uh, against MTSU. What is the dudes? What time do the guys play? Hold they start at seven tomorrow. They start at seven. Okay. Yeah, and so the men are at home. Ladies are abroad. But yes. Yeah, if you're around Murfreesboro and you're a Hilltopper fan, Pleasure go see them. Uh, if you uh, are near uh, Alabama, Birmingham, go see the girls play on the 16th. They play at 3 o'clock. Uh, and the men are at home both get, both games. So, yeah. MTSU, UAB, show out for the tops. Uh, salute to our guys, our recent new downloaders to the Hilltopper Nation and the Red Out crew from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, right. Yeah, I haven't had Jake in here to tell that to. Well, you um, were t- you were t- you were texting me about the um about hitting a thousand downloads, yes, which is an awesome. We milestone. have hit a thousand downloads, and we had a bunch of new people from Saudi Arabia make yes. us doing some downloads. So thanks, guys. I don't know when you listen to it, but awesome. Keep yeah, it up. Hey. And hey, if you guys are paying attention and you're listening to us, tell us what it's like to watch WKU games abroad and to like yeah. you know be listening and cheering from Saudi Arabia because yes. watch parties yes. or something. That's awesome. Let us know. Yes. Uh, and if you would like to sponsor us, just DM us. We'll get in touch with you. Uh, but absolutely, yes, uh, yeah. I hate to push the sponsorship, but we'll, we'd appreciate it. We love money. Yes. Uh, so as always, go tops. Go tops. Go tops.